<laughs> so, um, so my name is what well, everybody on my Facebook page know who the hell I am. So, uh, Ghazi prompted me to make a video around the white women's march that we went to as animal yesterday. And I want to first, before I start talk about the fact that, you know, 53% of white women voters voted for Trump. The rest of them voted for Hillary. And then the rest of them that didn't vote at all, didn't vote at all because they had no confidence in this system. But all of them, all of them seem to have come uh, to uh, this tr this uh, this white woman's march that um, was on the um, in DC yesterday, and apparently everywhere else in the world, London, Seattle, New York, white women turned out in record numbers because they were scared that they would actually have to be treated like you know African and other oppressed women have been treated for our entire existence under colonialism, and when we went out there, we went out there with the intent to organize any African woman to make a revolution. We didn't go out there to participate, to hold hands or anything like that. We went out there because our priority was to organize. And for what I saw, we were like the only organizers out there. There was nobody else. The 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 um, atmosphere out there was one of happiness and hugging and good to be alive within white society. And you know, Africans were kind of like, you know, trying to figure out where they should go and where they should stand. And overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, um, just like we said um, underneath, uh, um, just like we said on our article, that this was going to be a white women's march. If you look at the what, what, with the white women's, <laughs> the women's um, march.com website, these people had no demands on the system. You are using, you're cloaking yourself in the struggles and conditions of oppressed women uh, in this country, and there is no demands being made on the system. You're just going to go out there so that Trump can see you and see that you have all this power. But the reality is that African women don't have power. We don't have power because African people don't have power. This system continues to take, rob, and steal from us all the time. And joining hands with our oppressor ain't going to solve any problems. So we was out there and overwhelmingly white women, overwhelmingly hooting and hollering, wearing pink cat ear hats. Now I didn't know what these pink cat hair hats were, um, but, <laughs> but apparently they were to represent pussy. Now, I don't know about y'all. I have a problem with women in general being relegated to a body part. And these women have taken an insult from Trump as uh, a way to kind of empower themselves and put, you know, pink hat, pussy hats on top of their heads and, and walk around talking about pussy power. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that our people, um, African women in particular, um, can't relegate ourselves to a body part when this is how we've always been seen underneath colonialism and, and being attacked for this very thing. Now, a Facebook friend, Afidi Nomo, pointed out that these were pink pussies, <laughs> which meant that it only applied to white women. That means it only applied to white cisgender women, women who would identify with their the the, 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 the gender that they were uh, they were um, born with. And so, basically, those pink hats represent white nationalism. <laughs> those pink hats represent for everybody that this is a white woman's march there was no signs about deportation i ain't seen none mm -hmm. there was no signs about state violence or um uh women getting their children taken there was no visible uh outrage of the the, the contradictions that african women and other colonized women experience under oppression yet there was this big jovial um response to uh being out there together you know anti-trump but I found that anti-Trump can also be um, for white nationalism um, because if you were to bring up the issues of African women out there, people will give you like a sour look. Me telling the Bernie Spears talking about oppressed and colonized women. They wasn't trying to hear that. And and um, even when we screaming, we're handing out these flyers. You can 
obviously see the visceral reaction to who we were and what we were trying to do. And um, it's really indicative of the type of, of march that it was, the rally that it was, which was not speaking to the interest of our people. And, you know, I really just want to say that um, it's it's really uh, difficult for any African woman uh, who who wants to get free to not jump on these bandwagons because when we speak, when we speak and talk about all of our issues, when it's laid out on the screen for you, when you are posted up and your problems and your pain is on the, the late night news and you are being ignored, then I, I get why African women would want to go to a, a march like this and, and, and want to join in with the popular voice. But the reality is that that's not a, your agenda. It was never your agenda. Somebody on our Facebook page said that we were being separatists. Yes, we are separate. We are separating ourselves from colonialism. We are separating from ourselves from white nationalism. We are separating ourselves from anti-blackness. We are separating ourselves from everything that is against us. And we don't have to jump on the bandwagon to be seen or to be heard. We are going to do this work in the streets and protect and defend our women. And we don't need white women because they've never protected us. Somebody said, uh, this white woman had um, said on our page that um, we're in this together since when? Was it the time when my great grandma was wet nursing your baby? Or was it that time when... Um, uh, you benefit, you sold off, uh, my great, my great, great grandmother's child to somebody else because you wanted to get a profit. Or maybe it was that time when you called the police and those African children who wanted to have a pool party. Or maybe it was that other time when you got scared and clutched your person in the, in the elevator because a black man came on. Was it those times that we were in this together? I have never in this history of this country and probably elsewhere, African women and white women have never been on the same page. And it's because, but you know what makes people believe that is this whole idea of feminism. That somehow, that if we work together as women, then we're going to overturn this thing called patriarchy. But our problem has never been patriarchy. Our problem has been colon colonialism. We were, Africa was attacked. Our people were taken away uh, or colonized on the continent. We were stripped from our national identity. Our bodies became commodities. Our children were stripped away from us. All of these things happened to African people. And white women sat in their little bourgeois homes being oppressed by their men while African, other oppressed, uh, African women and men and children were in the field slaving for them just so that they could have a comfortable home to sit on their ass. So yeah, never was there a time when African women were in it on the same boat as white women? Or not, neither was there any colonized women in the same boat as these white women. You can't tell that to the indigenous Australians whose, whose, um, whose male members were penises were cut off and put in jars and sent to Europe um, as, as playthings, as, a, as a curiosities for white people. You can't tell that to African indigenous people who, whose um, entire... Uh, uh, People were wiped out. Um, you can't and and children stolen and and brainwashed to think that white power was good. You can't tell that we will. How were we ever in the same boat? And I'm tired of of these white women being able to um, talk about the narrative, what we should and should not think. Listen, our material material conditions, our history is laid out there. On the line, we can point to all the times in and as far back as we can remember as, as Africa has been attacked where white women has never been on our side, has never fought in the interests of Africans, even when they cloak themselves in the in the issues of African women, they despise the idea of African freedom. They just used the oppression that we were dealing with as a way to um, as a way to say women power, just like they're doing today. This is not new. This happened before. And African women have always been left to the side. So listen, I'm not interested in joining forces with white women to get their um, to so that they can be more oppressive or be a part of the oppressor system um, or to be um, better oppressors so that they can have more right. Um, in the oppressed nation, I am fighting for African people to be free. And that and that's the only way that we're going to solve any of these problems that impact the, the African women today. And 
Um, so any any rhetoric that says that we being separatist, good. We separating ourselves from all that BS that continues to oppress us. We separating ourselves from all of these um, these women who are opportunists as hell and will jump on anything, anything, just so that they can feel special and be accepted by the bourgeoisie. Listen, I am, I am, <laughs> I am in these streets with these women. I'm on phone calls. I'm trying to solve problems underneath the, uh, with Anwo and these, and what these women were out there doing at the women's march has nothing to do with black women, nothing to do with black women. They are going to go home. They've gone home. They've forgotten about the march and they definitely weren't thinking about you when they were at the march. I'm on a train coming back from this women's march yesterday. And you know, these people are supposed to be, you know, get your hands off my rights with your tiny hands. This is some of the posters that I saw from Trump. Yet, they on the train talking about supporting defense families and military. How, how, can, how can you support that when it's the same military and defense families that are out here uh, arming the borders, dropping bombs on my people, other people, people, other people's people? How can you defend that and, and say you want, you want uh, so basically what all that is is that you want uh, to be uh, included in white power. You want to be included in imperialism and you don't want any. And when you when that's being threatened, that's when um, uh, you want to get out in the streets in March. But you're not here in defense of nobody but yourself, but yourself, white women. And that's that's being real. We saw, you know, fantastic uh, imagery of this sister that out there sucking on her lollipop with the sign said, don't forget, 53 percent of white women voted for Trump. But even if Trump was not elected. Even if there was Hillary Clinton elected, she is an enemy. She's a beast and she's an enemy of black women, an enemy of black women. If you talk about the, the Adoption and Safe Families Act, an enemy of black women, that, that single-handedly changed the scope of how African children are being taken out of these homes of their parents and not given back. She's a, she's um, championed some of the worst legislation that has attacked African communities in this country. So regardless of whether or not Trump or Hillary, if it was if it was not Trump and if it was Hillary, then it doesn't matter to African women. We've always been under this system where um, it never benefited us. So, you know, white women are scared and they should be. Um, not because of Trump, but because colonized people are rising up <laughs> and they need to get on the right side of the question, just like their white male counterparts. Um, and nothing uh, is going to stop uh, African people. And you know what? These African women are killing me right now because um, I actually had a coworker that called me. She's like, you went to this march? <laughs> but... Uh, I'm just like, nah, I didn't go for that. But like, you know, these women, African women ain't drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, they was out there, but they wasn't drinking that Kool-Aid. They was just like, we just gonna see how this turned out. <laughs> we just gonna just watch and see how these white women roll. Um, we gonna, we just gonna, just gonna see. Because they wasn't drinking that Kool-Aid. I think under all of that, um, that stuff, we, there's a hope from African women who don't, who aren't political that white women are definitely going to jump on the bandwagon and champion their interests. And that even if white women are upset uh, about rights and stuff, that somehow that's going to trickle down to us. So we have to demand more. We got to demand more from, uh, from ourselves and demand, uh, more uh, and see a future that isn't inclusive of, um, that isn't predicated on what white women do, white people do, that we have to see our interests in ourselves. And this white women's march was just an indicator, a huge indicator that their pink pussy hats had nothing to do with purple pussies, <laughs> to be honest and be quite clear, or, you know, brown pussies or anything like that. Um, it was very clear that these white women were out here for self. And we already said that they would be. We already said they were going to be on some kumbaya mess. That they was going to be holding hands and cheering for themselves. And doing all these things that African, uh, that white women do when they're being opportunist. Um, and uh, let me just say one more thing. We selling the burning spear. 
this older white woman. We like imperialism, capitalism, anti, we just about anti-oppression and, you know, saying that this is, speaks to the interests of the poor and working class African community. We out here and this white woman who's clearly, you know, you know, we like what you're saying. Um, but do you have change for a 20? And I'm just like, no, nah, we ain't got change for no 20. She said, I like what you're saying, but I'm definitely not going to give you $20. Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> And I was like, Lynn, come on now, get out of the way. You know, she was just, you know, these, you like what you're saying, but you can't give reparations, bitch. I'm like, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm just like, this, this, is, this woman was like, really, um, uh, just, I think she summed up the whole, the whole white woman question for me in our interaction was just that we like to be out here chanting, but like when it comes to Negroes and brown people, I, we we just don't want to give more than we're comfortable with. And that's pretty much the white women's march on Washington and everywhere else they've I, they've had of march. Um yeah, I, I I don't know what more to say, but you know, it really um you know, people had called us haters, and that's okay. Um they said that we were exclusionary excluded out no, on on the Facebook page if you go to the video that we posted yesterday, me and Antoinette. Um, they called this exclusionary that we excluded ourselves. I'm just like, I'm sorry, no. Uh, colonialism did that, <laughs> and white nationalism did that. Um, and white nationalism actually attacked us and made us into commodities and all of this other um sort of you know this this entity as opposed to being the um uh, objects of history. I'm sorry, the the subjects of history. We now the objects because now we just a uh, a tool for you to use to um, to say that you're fighting for us or that um, anything like that. So it it was clear that um again that the women's march was um a piece of propaganda for white women and it helped them uh to feel good about themselves. But uh, at the end of the day, they're going to go home and still call the police on black children if they gather too much around their house. Um, they're still going to ignore um, the black mother's tears when they are crying because their children are being murdered in the streets. They will turn a blind eye and actually be the judges in the cases where black children are being taken out of the homes of black mothers. And they will continue to do the same mess, uh, imperialist, colonialist mess that they've always done in their own interest. And that's just, that's just it. Um, and it's not until we take a stand as African women, as African people and say, this is what we stand for. If you can't get on board with this, then we're not supporting none of your agendas. And unfortunately, I saw that on the stage, there was a whole bunch of brown people, but in that audience <laughs> of pink pussies, pink hats um it was white people white women white people white 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 and black folks was just you know looking on the sidelines but um our power is with each other our power is fighting for freedom um overturning a system that is oppressing us and what well, oh, not overturning destroying the system that is oppressing us so that we can have black power in the hands of black people so that we can have control over our resources and build up our reality the way that we see fit without um, the um, intervention of white people. Uh, well, they might intervene, but we'll have the power to push them back. And that is liberation for African women, not uh, any of this madness that's in the street that didn't even criticize capitalism, didn't even criticize imperialism, didn't even criticize patriarchy. <laughs> I ain't see none of that shit. Like they didn't even criticize patriarchy. They were just criticizing Trump, and that was that is um, really telling. So anyway, that's all I had to say. Uhuru Kamala.